Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today in our rescue series of videos, uh, a little bit in this one, what we're going to look at is a litter rigged with the Sterling Purcell bridle rig, uh, along with an Aztec as the foot end Aztec, and another Aztec just here as the attendant Aztec. Now this system is not new by any stretch, it's been around for quite a while, many of you are probably quite familiar with this. I guess uh, the main point of this video is to draw out some of the finer detail in this setup and for those of you who have not seen it or used this setup, just to explain how different it is from other potentially similar bridle and litter positioning systems that are out there. When we build an Aztec into the foot end of the litter, and again another Aztec for the attendant, it certainly gives us a capability range with this bridal rig that uh, is really different than anything else that's out there and it enables us to do some pretty amazing things with the litter. So what we're going to do is walk down from the top down to look at the specific details in here and then we're going to see how it works. Uh, a number of different aspects of that, how we can pitch the litter from horizontal to vertical and then back to horizontal mid-operation. Also how we set up for in riding or top riding above the litter and we're going to look at the two different versions of how to accomplish that okay so so from the top down what we're looking at here the tie-in point on the rig as you can see the main line which is the green rope and the belay which is the orange are directly tied into the bridle point there are no carabiners or connectors for that matter and certainly no rigging plates um, we've got a follow through or re-threaded figure eight in the main line tied straight through the head end per cells. They actually go via these two rigging rings. We've got a couple of Petzl ring S's up in there. Anything similar is going to work. It gives us a nice clean interface for the rope to travel through the head end per cells. Then we've got my attendant Aztec, the top ring, and then we've got the foot end Aztec here, and again, the top ring up there. Notice with both Aztecs, we've got orange pulleys up, blue pulleys down in both cases. So it's easy to remember they're orientated the same way. In this instance here, we've got the belay line is tied through the connection point using a follow through Alpine butterfly. Now there's probably five other ways you could do that. Follow through bow lines. Uh, we could extend a tie in with another figure eight, whatever you want. Uh, one of the reasons for using the Alpine there is I've created this extension, which traces all the way through and is tied into the sternal connection on my harness. So that gives me a secondary point of connection, but it also means I've got a leash that if I need to park the litter on something mid-operation, I can come off my Aztec and by using that lead with this short red prussic just here as an adjuster, I can move around the litter and do things uh, without trying to jury rig some sort of improvised safety on the litter rail. It's always there. And of course, at the end of the day, that's my second point of connection. So we've got our belay line tied in via a follow through figure, uh, follow through alpine up there. If you're not sure how to do that one, there's another one of our videos on our YouTube channel that explains exactly that. Coming down from there, the other points of detail, we've got the blue pulley on the foot end Aztec engaged lower down here. Of course, the blue prussic is engaged. And likewise, on the lower end of my attendant Aztec, I've got the blue prussic engaged as well. So they're both the same. We engage the lower prussics because they're the ones that you can reach when you're actually operating the system. If we engage either or both of the orange ones and we do the pitch control thing or extending out, eventually they end up out of reach. So you want to remember blue pulley down in both, blue prussic engaged on both. Okay, so and that's our setup, alrighty. So what we're going to have a look at now is how it actually works, pitching the litter mid-operation from horizontal to vertical and then back again. All right, so here we are in position ready to change the pitch of the litter. Okay, so this is not something you're going to want to do all the time by any means, and it's certainly not a standard thing. I guess there's only a handful of reasons why pitching a litter, certainly with a badly injured person in the litter to vertical, uh, is warranted. I, certain instances like that may be to go between obstructions on a cliff face, potentially, like vegetation, or, or um, boulders or any sort of uh, projections sticking out from the cliff face. Likewise, in a building or built environment, we may be requiring to go between 
facade features like air conditioning units or something on the outside of the building or maybe through a manway or an opening in an industrial plant where we just physically can't get the litter through horizontally and we need to briefly go to vertical and then go back to horizontal again to maintain the condition of our casualty. So what we're going to do to facilitate this is activate or extend out on the foot end Aztec and to do that I'm going to take in on the standing part of rope on the Aztec unloading the Prusik and of course we're going to bump that Prusik and start to extend under control the foot end of the litter and it's actually quite easy to do. All we're doing is paying rope through the Aztec and that litter will start to go onto the incline straight away. So I'm going to extend this right down and then we're going to have a look at what happens next. Alrighty, so we've extended out on the foot end set of forwards down here. What's going to happen pretty soon is this is going to start to get out of reach and already I'm at about the limit of what I can comfortably reach without pivoting over in my harness to extend the foot end of the litter. So what we're going to do here is stop at the prussic hole of the foot end of the litter and I'm going to come up to my attendant Aztec, take control of the standing part of rope here and then taking in slightly, bump the prussic just here and I'm going to extend down so that I can chase the foot end of the litter. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, now that I've gotten down lower, clearly I'm back in easy proximity of the foot end of the set of fours here. I'm going to continue, continue to extend down and as the litter goes to vertical, I'm physically going to climb around the foot end of the litter so I'm effectively facing the patient like this. this stage we're nearly there, I just need to go slightly lower uh, and just extend out on the foot end set of fours on the litter a little bit further and we're going to have our litter in total vertical attitude. Um, something that's often missed by people when they're practicing this is if we have this length adjusting prusik on our secondary leash just here, you can end up hanging on that. It's no big deal, it's just more of an inconvenience, but it's easy to forget it when we're operating the two Aztecs. So what I'm going to do is move that down slightly so that I know that I don't have tension and I'm not going to get hung up on that. And I'm going to extend down further now on my attendant Aztec. Like so. And I'm going to do the final part of extending out on the litter foot end Aztec and I should wind up virtually looking at my casualty with the Purcell head end bridles at full extension over the top end of the litter like this. So we've got the litter now at full vertical extension. Uh, I've adjusted my attendant Aztec, so I'm effectively looking at the patient. What this enables me to do now if I need to is narrow up our profile so we can go through a very narrow aperture if needs be, like a manway in an industrial plant or between objects on the side of the building, whatever you want and whatever presents itself. It's purely a matter of reaching around the litter and just pulling in to make the overall profile as narrow as possible, like this. So I can pull right in, and as you can see, we can make it pretty narrow to go through some very small holes. Excellent, so now we're going to go back to horizontal again, and it's just the reverse process. It's a function of incrementally taking in on your own attendant Aztec, and then the foot end Aztec, bouncing from one to the other until we effectively get back to a horizontal litter, slightly head up in the orientation we're after, with ourselves as the attendant back in the position we want to uh, resume for the remainder of the operation. So it's going to look like this. Good, so here we are. We've got the litter back to horizontal again. We can fine tune the pitch via the foot end set of fours and also the head end per cells if necessary. Uh, ultimately what's going to happen though, because we've just gone down and back up on both Aztecs, is we've ended up with a massive amount of slack in the 8mm line on both of those. So we need to police all that up, obviously so we're not dragging a loop behind us that can get caught or jammed on something. So I've bundled all this one up here, 
Uh, typically with the foot end Aztec, what we do is just clip the bag off onto the side of the litter so it's outboard um, and we can cleanly take care of all the extra rope in there so that's sorted and then I'll do the same with my attendant Aztec because I'm wearing the bag on my side here so I'll stow all that out of the way that's going to go in there and then I can call up down whatever and we're good to continue with the operation and there we have it um, so what we're going to look at now is a technique called in riding or top riding or high riding there's a number of different names for it they all mean the same thing. Effectively what I'm doing at the moment is out riding on the litter and I'm physically below the litter, which in most instances is gonna work, certainly for low angle terrain and vertical stuff or in free air, no problem. If I needed to take this litter past a roof or an overha overhanging obstruction or what have you, it's quite difficult to get the litter past because it's above me and it gets in the way. So if we adjust our riding position to top ride or in ride, it's going to make it that much easier to negotiate the litter past the roof or an overhang or what have you. Again, with this type of setup, the bridle rig we've got here, it's very easy to do that. So what I'm going to do is extend out on the foot end Aztec to lower the foot down. Then I'm also going to extend out on the head end Purcells. That will lower the head down and it's going to create a big triangle here below the bridle and above the top rail of the litter that I can get up into and achieve that top riding position. So it's going to look like this. Good, there we have it. Excellent. So an alternative with a very slight variation to the in-ride technique that we looked at a moment ago is simply to extend the attendance Aztec from the bridle connection point just here, which effectively created a head height limit on the system I used a moment ago, uh, to an arbitrary point up on the main line and belay line using two red crossings. By doing that, we can create attachment, an attachment point that we can position wherever we want and gain as much head height on the system as we're after. So straight away attaching up there by two prussics, it's now made the Aztec longer for a similar position to what I was in a moment ago, but now I can get up that much higher and that much more easily like this. All right, so there we go. I look into a pitch control technique with an appropriate litter. Uh, in this case, the litter's rigged with the Sterling Purcell bridle system, and we have two Aztecs built in there, okay? So this is not the only way you can do this, and of course, given the equipment you've got, I can probably think of 30 different ways straight away we can rig this. It obviously requires having this equipment, but it's a pretty neat system, and if you try it out and practice and train with it, it is amazingly adaptive to different situations. When it comes to the Aztecs, it's one of those types of devices that you don't need it and you can get away without it, but if you have them, they are amazingly useful uh, and can add incredible value into our systems during operations and certainly in training. So, so if you've got the gear, get it out and give it a go and, uh, and try it out. That's it for this one. We will see you next time.